Hi guys, now we're gonna learn about density. So all of the things that I've discussed before, we're still gonna be doing, and we're gonna be looking at it now with density, okay? So whenever you think of density, and I learn from my students all this time, and so my students have taught me a lot. So density, I want you to re remember it as the broken heart. The broken heart. And that way you'll never forget it because you've got to use it all the time when you leave me and everything else, right? So just know it. So what do I mean by that? It's the broken heart. It is, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I'm a terrible artist. I'm going to try. It is mass over volume. Isn't that the cutest thing? So it's a broken heart. Isn't that neat? All right, so don't forget to use it because it identifies the matter, all right? And when we move into chapter three, which is shortly, we'll still do a little math, but nothing like what we're doing in this chapter, but you'll be doing the math from this chapter throughout the entire course. So make it your business to remember these little things to help to remember it. So just remember density is the broken heart. Now, oops, sorry. Don't forget also that density is a conversion unit. Anytime I got to go from mass to volume or volume to mass, use the density. All right. Now there's only one density that I want you to memorize. All other values of density I will give you. But the only thing I want you to memorize is no, the, density of water. H2O is what? Water. We know dihydrogen monoxide in this. And that is going to be equal to 1.0 grams per milliliter, which is the same thing now that you've looked at the last module, 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay? So this is the only thing I want you to memorize with density. Okay, so memorize it. All right, so now that you have that, we can work a few problems. Okay, so let's start with something really simple, not a big deal. And then we'll, you know, there's nothing much you can do with this. All right, so um, let's see. Examples should be blue. Here we go. So let's say that um, I want to know how many grams, how many grams of water are released into, ooh, my writing's bad today, into a bucket. Uh, to uh, that has that has a capacity of that has a capacity of let's say you fill it to the brim and let's make it uh, six point six hundred and ninety eight milliliters. Oh no, that's not, that's too easy. 698, um, ooh, let's see. Okay, 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 I'm being nice. Deciliters, all right? Easy, good, cheesy, that's nothing for you. Yes, because you know the conversions and what you have to do. So let's take again the path. So the how many, what, grams of water so question mark grams, and I'm just gonna put the H2 at the bottom, keeping it clear, are released into a bucket. So I had me a bucket, that's my bucket. And I'm gonna put, fill the water in here, all 
right, cool. That has a capacity. So the whole capacity, I'm gonna assume that it, nothing ha happens in that bucket. You're gonna fill it to the brim. This whole bucket is 698 deciliters. Now that's crazy. Uh, but anyway, so 698 deciliters. It's a big button bucket. All right, so now with that in mind, let's write a path. Same old stuff, nothing's changed, right? So you know that you got, got to go from a deciliter. Somehow you've got to get to a milliliter. Why? Because you just learned for water, the density of water is equal to 1.0 grams per milliliter. Yes? Easy, tray cheesy. So now, once you have that, now this is the thing that I find the students don't get. Whenever they give you that fraction in that definition, you have to understand that for water, 1.0 grams is equal to 1.0 milliliters. Do you see that? That's what it's saying. So you can flip that fraction either way you need to go. Okay, so here we go. And then we're going to go straight over to milliliters uh, to micrograms. So this portion we just wrote down here is in green. 1.0 milliliters is equal to 1.0 grams. Okay, that is our definition for that conversion, right? because we know the density of water. And now let's look at, let's look at this definition. This is exactly what we've been doing all day today. Milliliters, who's larger? You've got your deciliters and your deciliters here will be one. And this is a minus one, that's a minus three, but we keep it positive because life is good. And you stayed on, oh, sorry, marijuana. You stayed on the same side, right? So when you have the same side, you just subtract your powers of 10. So three minus one is two. So that's one times 10 to the two. So that's my deciliters definition. Now I could have made it a lot more difficult, but I just want you to do this easy thing so we can build as we continue on. All right, so. I'm ready to work on that first part of the de of the first part here. So I'm gonna say what goes at the bottom, deciliters, what goes at the top, milliliters, and I gotta put the numbers right there next to the unit. Everybody with me here? And now let's do the next definition. The next definition, I have one milliliter, and that's 1.0 grams. Now that's really infinite because that's a definition. If you got distilled water, it better be one point or darn close to it. Um, 1.0 milliliters is equal to 1.0 grams. And so that now cancels your milliliters, your deciliters cancel. So your answer becomes 6.9, oh, sorry, 600, 698 times 10 to the two grams. And in scientific notation, bouncy, bouncy, made the power 10 smaller, excuse me, decimal smaller, and then the power 10 goes up. So that's 6.98 times 10 to the fourth grams. That is the answer. So it's very, very easy to work with density. I want you to try to work some of the problems that we have, and remember that you're going to be reading, and that is the most important thing that you have to do because reading is fundamental. So work the problems, chat with me. Let me go and answer some of the 